for a few moments, we want to talk about faith when facing the fire. Faith when facing the fire. When we think about uh, what is faith, uh, we often go directly to uh, the epistle to the Hebrews in the New Testament, where the writer gives an understanding of what faith is. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And most of us can call upon that, those words, that understanding as what we see as a definition of faith. But what does that really mean? What truly is faith? So when we're talking about the cries of the faithful, or how do faithful people speak, how do faithful people sound, we have to know more uh, about faith. We have to be able to understand. We have to know uh, what truly faith is. Faith in the Greek understanding was uh, described using the word pistis. P-I-S-T-I-S. It means fidelity. It means trust. It's where we get the word epistemology. And so the Greek understanding of faith is a belief in something that has been proven time and time and time and time and time and time again to be reliable. That means that it's been proven so many times that to not believe would be simply to be foolish. And that's what faith in God is. Faith in God is belief in something that no matter how many times you've called on it, no matter how many times you've uh, looked for an answer, a solution, a, a source and supply, he's always been there to give us what we need. And so that's what faith is. Faith is Belief in something that we can count on. Amen. Amen. Belief in something that we can rely on. Uh, and so when we think about uh, what being a faithful person is, we uh, realize that God has given us sufficient intel. Amen, somebody. God has given us enough uh, accounts, enough uh, 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 instances and cases of uh, to place our faith and trust and hope in God and God has never failed us yet. When we look at our text this morning, uh, we see a, a group of boys who are in enemy territory. Amen. Amen. They are uh, Jews, but they have been exiled to Babylon. And when they have gone into Babylon, everything has changed. The king has even changed their names. Lord, have mercy. Changed their names up in order to exert influence and control over them. And also to give them a new destiny. We see the king, Nebuchadnezzar, establishing his empire. Making sure that everyone knows that he is in charge and no one else is. Nebuchadnezzar is a king. Uh, he's a ruler, amen, uh, and not a leader. And we ought to know uh, in this climate that we're in that there's a difference between rulers and leaders, Sister Faye. Amen. There's a difference between a ruler and a leader. Rulers want to not only uh, exert their influence, but they want to control. Rulers uh, 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 will 
don't mind uh, threatening uh, with violence in order to make sure that their program uh, or, or their institution uh, is carried out. Rulers uh, uh, don't have any uh, 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 care about humanity, but instead uh, only want to amass more power for themselves. Rulers are motivated by evil. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Rulers are motivated by pure evil. Rulers want to kill and destroy anything that opposes. Whether it means destroying families. Whether it means uh, making sure that people don't have proper health care. Whether it means uh, uh, ensuring that the rich get way richer and the poor uh, get way poorer. We're talking about rulers and not leaders. And we have, in this case, Nebuchadnezzar, and he has erected this golden statue, uh, and he's made an edict uh, knowing that the Jewish people uh, uh, were to worship God and only God. Uh, their, their religious understanding was uh, such that uh, they did not worship idols. Uh, and when we saw that they did worship idols, uh, we saw that, that their whole nationhood fell apart. And so Nebuchadnezzar, uh, uh, in an effort to, to control, uh, to influence, uh, to destroy the spirit uh, of these Jewish people, uh, erected a golden statue uh, and said, uh, you will worship, you will bow down, uh, amen. Uh, you, you will worship the golden statue that I have set up. If not, then you'll be thrown into a blazing fire. In this text, we, we see the case of how faith looks. You know, it's easy to say you have faith when you don't have to exercise. But what happens when you are facing the fire? Have you ever thought about this story in its context? Now think about it. We're talking about a vast kingdom. Hundreds of thousands of millions of people. <coughs> but the text says that there are only three who are opposing. Lord, have mercy. There are only three boys who are opposing uh, the ruler of the day. Can you imagine... Uh, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar uh, uh, setting up this time uh, to worship this statue. There, there's music playing. Amen. Uh, and, and we know that if, if there's music playing, if, if it's the right song, uh, we'll dance to, to just about any. <laughs> Amen. Some of y'all dancing to a song about Kiki right now. Amen. <laughs> There's a party going on and uh, the music is playing, the, the instruments are there, there there's a festive atmosphere, uh, 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 and there's only three Hebrew boys who are willing to stand in opposition of the ruler. Now there are thousands of Jews, amen, who have professed their uh, uh, faith and trust in the one true God and said that they will worship him, but now when they are faced with opposition. Only three faithful people appear. How many times in your life have you professed something and then when the heat was turned on, Lord have mercy. When your friends didn't agree with you, amen. When your job was uh, at stake, when your family is, is at stake, uh, are you as faithful as you profess to be? Out of all the Jews, three stood in opposition of the king. And he says, uh, he lays it out really clearly. He says, is it true, O 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that you do not serve my gods. And you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up. But he says, when the music starts playing, you better fall down and worship the statue that I have made. But if you do not worship it, you shall be immediately thrown into a fire, a furnace, a blazing fire. And he taunts them, he said, and, and who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Amen. Nebuchadnezzar has no fear of the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. As a matter of fact, he dares this God to challenge his authority. But how many of us know that Nebuchadnezzar had already lost the battle when he decided to pick on a God who put him in power? Lord, have mercy. How many of us know that no matter uh, uh, what position we uh, 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 win or, or take, uh, that God uh, has placed us in that position, uh, and it's God uh, who can take us out, amen? That means that no, no position, no, no office, no title uh, is a lifetime appointment for you. Uh, but instead, uh, uh, we serve uh, as God uh, allows us to serve. Uh, and I don't care uh, who you are. I don't care how well you do what you do. Uh, uh, anytime you uh, 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 believe that it's because of your own ability and not because of God's uh, grace upon you uh, that you're able uh, to be where you are, uh, uh, then you stand uh, in danger of God removing you from your place. Amen. 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 Kings have been removed. Yes. Lord have mercy. Yes. Amen. 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 And so, he's taunting God. He's taunting God through God's faithful. Uh, and we have to recognize sometimes uh, uh, we are being taunted uh, uh, by the enemy. Uh, uh, and what really is taking place is not about us, uh, but it's about God. Uh, and we have to know which battles we need to fight. Amen. Uh, sometimes we have to know uh, that this is not my battle, but this battle belongs to the Lord. Uh, uh, I don't know if you realize this, but every battle is not yours to fight. Uh, uh, sometimes we come uh, with our boxing gloves already Old, uh, uh, when we shouldn't be fighting that type of battle, uh, when we should be fighting the good fight of faith. Uh, and I just believe uh, that when we fight the good fight of faith, uh, then God uh, fights our battle. Uh, that God is on our side. Uh, uh, we don't have to get bloodied. Uh, we don't have to get dirty. Uh, uh, all we have to do uh, uh, is stand on our faith. He says, what God, or who is the God that will, you de will deliver you out of my hands? And then the text says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present, present a defense to you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O oh, king, then let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods. Uh, we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. These boys tell us a few things about faithful people. Amen. First of all, faithful people are unwavering. Amen, somebody. Faithful people are unwavering. That means uh, uh, we're not double-minded. We, we're not tossed uh, uh, to and fro uh, based on the circumstances. That means uh, if you believe in God, you have to believe all the way in God. Uh, you can't believe God uh, uh, when you're around this group uh, 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 and not believe God when you're around that. 
that group up. It, uh, it means that you cannot uh, uh, believe in God when it's convenient for you or, or comfortable for you. But, but when you have faith uh, in God, uh, you have to be uh, solid in your foundation. Uh, uh, because God, uh, when God is faithful to us, uh, God goes with us all the way. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm rushing ahead, uh, but I believe uh, uh, God went for us all the way uh, when he sent his son, uh, Jesus, uh, all to the cross. Uh, uh, God did not pull him back, uh, but he said go all the way uh, uh, for my children. Uh, uh, I, I need you uh, to be unwavering. And so as faithful people, we have to be unwavering as well. When the, the fiery furnace was threatened, those boys could have easily said, well God, we'll catch you on the next round. Lord have mercy. But instead, they were unwavering in their faith. Uh, they said, uh, we don't need to present a defense to you. We don't answer to you. You may have a temporary earthly authority, but, but my Father in heaven has a eternal uh, uh, authority. Uh, uh, all the time, uh, but we have to be firm uh, and solid uh, in our 
faith. Your faith has to be unconditional. It cannot be uh, uh, tossed up uh, with every uh, changing of the wind. Amen. Uh, Lord, I'm preaching to somebody. Uh, uh, our faith has to be unconditional. Uh, uh, and finally, uh, uh, he said, but if not be known to your king that we will not serve your gods and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Uh, what these three Hebrew boys were uh, trying to make clear was that we don't know what God is going to do in this situation, uh, but we know that our God is with us. Amen. You know, when I think about uh, this text, it reminds me of a world that we live in today. You know, sometimes people think about this threat of a fiery furnace and say, well, you know, there's no way that that story could have any truth or validity to it because people don't act like that. But we know, even in some of our own lifetime, people were put into gas chambers, Lord have mercy, and exterminated because of some religious idea. We know that people have been maimed and lynched and treated all sorts of inhumane ways. We realize that a fiery furnace is not that far-fetched. But instead, we know that evil is real in this world. Amen, somebody. Evil is real. And, and sometimes we we think that 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 the imaginations of, of people run run wild, but these are real things. Evil, uh, uh, there's a cycle of evil in this world. Uh, and if you're not paying attention to it, Lord, I'm praying for you. Yes. Because we have to understand uh, that the power of evil is alive in this world, but, but the power of God uh, is so much more powerful uh, than any evil uh, that has ever existed. You know, the text says that these boys were ready to go into the fire if that's what it took. Because they believed in their God more than they were concerned about the possible consequences. And how many of you know that your God is more loving, is more powerful than any consequences of, that the world can dream up? They were ready to go into the fiery furnace. Of, they were ready to stand on their faith. And that's the last thing we uh, learn from this text about faith. Uh, faith is a journey where you are never alone. Uh, not only did Shadrach have Meshach, uh, but Meshach had Shadrach. Uh, not only did Meshach have Abednego, but Abednego had Meshach. Uh, uh, and not only uh, did they have one another, uh, but the scripture says uh, that when they were thrown into the fire. Uh, when they were in the furnace, y'all, uh, uh, he said uh, uh, they were walking around, uh, and when the king uh, opened the door and looked in, uh, he said, uh, I only threw three of them in there. Uh, but it looks like there uh, were four of them in there. Uh, what are you saying, preacher? Uh, uh, he said, uh, uh, I see the presence of God uh, with them. Uh, uh, how many of you know uh, that when you go to the fire,
very present help in a time of trouble. You ought to know that. You ought to have that. Those are the words of the faithful. Amen. Uh, we ought to know uh, that we are never in this journey alone. But not only are your brothers and sisters with you, but God is with you. And his presence ought to, ought to wrap us up. Amen. Uh, and give us hope for our future. I invite you to stand as we 